So let's see then if we can develop an expression for S time average that we can use for plane waves. So this will be specifically for plane waves only. You can then reuse this equation whenever you have a problem involving plane waves. For, so first let's write out the electric field vector phasor has some amplitude, I'll say E naught, and then the phase E to the minus gamma dotted with R. Uh, if we, this is just holds generally in three dimensional space regardless of the direction of propagation. So we're not limited here to just propagation in the Z direction, for example. So then we can also write an expression for the H magnetic, for the H vector phasor. So H also has an amplitude and has the same phase, gamma dotted with R. So if we plug this into our expression for S, the time average, our general expression for S was one half the real part of E crossed with H complex conjugate. That's just from the previous slide. So now here, this is where it's written out more clearly where we plug in this expression for E and then this general expression for H. Then since the propagation vector gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta times gamma hat. And then we can also relate the magnetic field to the electric field. We can say H is equal to gamma hat crossed with E naught to give us the correct direction. And E naught over eta will give us the correct amplitude. If we do these two things, then we can rewrite our expression here. So gamma here you can see is written out and the H naught is written with um, E naught. Oh, yeah, this whole thing actually, right there. Then we can apply the complex conjugate to the phase terms and this changes the sign here in front of the J beta. And then we also have a complex conjugate now on eta. So we've now do, uh, applied this to the different terms that it needs to be applied to. And then lastly, we can simplify by taking both of the cross products here, this one and this one, to give us the direct. This gives us a unit vector in the direction of propagation once we do that. And then we can also combine the e to the minus j beta, this right here, and, and on this term we have e to the plus j beta. So once we add those together and, and multiply, so you add the exponential term parts, they're going to cancel. And then finally we can write our cross product as the magnitudes of two the two vectors multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them. So putting all this together, we're going to get e vector phasor, that's from this e and that e, squared, and we just have the alpha term in the exponentials left, so we have e to the minus 2, because there's two of them, alpha gamma dotted with r over 2 eta, the 2 is from there, this is from eta, and then cosine of the angle of eta, because that's the only angle we're left with, the angle between these two, these two vectors. And we get a positive angle, that eta angle, because eta is in the denominator, so we're going to have minus, uh, but then we have the complex conjugate, so we're going to have another minus there that both cancel, and we get a positive angle for eta. Here's the final form of the time average pointing vector that we came up with for plane waves. So you can use this simplified it doesn't seem simplified, I guess, if you look at it. E cross H is a lot simpler, but this one is a lot easier to apply because you only need the amplitude of the electric field, you need alpha and eta, and then you can figure out your time average power. Now, in general, we can also uh, define an attenuation rate A for the plane wave. Let's assume for the moment that if we have propagation in the Z direction, 
finding the attenuation rate is a matter it's in decibels so we take 10 10 because we're dealing with power 10 log 10 and we take s time average time average uh, power at some distance z over over the average the time average power at position z so if it's not propagating in the z direction we would just have two observation points that we want to calculate the attenuation rate and um, we would take the two observation points and then we would use the distance between along the direction of propagation to in order to uh, calculate the attenuation rate so if you plug in this equation and the only thing you change is z or the distance then what we're going to get is a lot of the terms are going to cancel and what you end up with is 10 log base 10 of e to the minus 2 alpha z and if you further simplify you're going to get minus 8.68 alpha z and that is in decibels okay get out your in-class project notebooks and make a note about our satellite being at an altitude of 200 kilometers and that we want to add a communication channel centered at 1.6 gigahertz in general we can calculate the time average power flow from that equation one half the real part of e cross h complex conjugate but since we can quickly assume our transmitted signal is a plane wave uh, since our wavelength is just 19 centimeters we can use this simplified expression that showing on the top here for the time average power of a plane wave